All right, I'm a tad bit early here to Fletcher Jones, and I wanted to show you a little bit of their layout so you can kind of see how I do what I do. Um, I'm going to flip this camera around real quick. Okay, how it goes is we start with these first set of cars right here in this line. This is closest to the building. Now, as I go this way, they'll do this line of cars. And then if you look way back over there, they'll do that line. And then they'll come up and do this line here. Um, sometimes we do this value zone over here and other times we go over here and do this. Okay. What I want to show you is on each of these cars is this little sheet. And right here it's really important to notice the stock number, the year, make and model, and trim. And then a lot of times there will be a price down here and if the price isn't there, you'll see the price here on the window. Now, if you don't have the stock number there, sometimes they don't have it on the sheet. In the corner of the window is the stock number here, and you'll see the make and model, but you won't see the trim, and you won't see mileage, but you'll have a stock number there. Um, every now and then, let me see if I can find a car that is not a Toyota. Let's see... Let's do this Hyundai. Maybe we can do it with this Hyundai. Every now and then they'll have something. If you notice on the Toyota ones, they'll have a stock number that says CP and then a number. And the reason they have that is because it means certified pre-owned Toyota. Um, okay, this one right here. This one here, if you look at it, it shows the make and model, but the stock number is over here, and then it'll have a price right here. But if you notice, this stock number here is certified, but it's not a Toyota. And then you'll see other ones that'll have a T on it instead. Okay, now I'm gonna go up and get Carlos and let him know that I'm here. Um, and then they will come out and then I'll show you the things that I do to get ready so that you can see how I set up and kind of go through a little, I go through a little mental checklist in my head of the things that I'm getting ready for um, and how I do the, the microphones and the setup and all that kind of thing. Um, and then when I get start when I start shooting, I'll actually turn to the camera and record some video there on that camera rather than this iPad. All right, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the first thing I do before I even open this bag is I silence my phones. Um, this is very important because you don't want a phone call to interrupt when you're shooting. Okay, take the camera out. Set it aside. A lot of times, actually, before I even take the camera out, I'll take the mics out because sometimes these guys will come and I'll get the mics and um, they'll go into the bathroom and put them on. Now, I kind of need two hands for this. I'm not sure if I can do this. Yeah, I can't really. I do it like this. Yeah, I can't really do it. Okay, so basically, I need to plug the microphone into here, and I need to make sure this mute is off. And then on the microphone, if you open it up, there's an on-off switch. You just press it and hold it a couple seconds. It comes on, lets you know that it's on. I know it says low bat. Okay, I know it says low bat, but that doesn't mean the battery is low. It just means it's on. This will start blinking if it's, if it's low. Now if you look, it says set to transmit, and let me show you the other one. The other one should say set three. Set three transmit. Okay, set three should be for this mic, and set two should be for that one, for the extra one. Not sure if that's the way it goes, but I'm pretty sure that is the way it goes. If I need, I've brought some extra AA batteries. That's all they use is just rechargeable AA batteries and they last a while. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hook these up and I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, I have my camera all hooked up now. Got my headphones in. Um, I've got it just hooked up exactly the way I had it hooked up before in the master control room. I'm going to turn this on right here and you'll see that come on. Now this should come on when the camera comes on, but I, I still flip the power on. I don't know why. 
and I turn the camera on right there. Now I'm just going to pull this around just so you can see it. And it's on. Okay. Now that's on. Okay. The mics are on too. These mics will last for days if you charge them up properly. Okay. Take the lens cap off. Throw it in the bag because I don't need it. And I'm going to be outside. So the filter that I need to use is four. See that? Let me focus on that. Four. Okay. For the most part, once Carlos gets down here and he'll come from clear over there, once he gets down here, he'll come here, get his mic, and he'll start shooting, and we'll start over here. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, let me disconnect my headphones so I can show you this real quick. I kind of have an order in shooting things when I shoot the B-roll, because after I'm done shooting the segments, I'll shoot the B-roll. What I do is, I come to each car, and I shoot this first. That's the first thing I shoot. And I get it so that I can see this and see the price, and then I'm good. And I do this quickly. Then, I go to the back, and I highlight the model. And if there's a trim, which is usually over here or something, I'll highlight the trim. Then I'll go right up to the front, and I'll go in here and get a shot in here. And if it's a special car, like let's say it's this Corolla S, I'll get some shots of the external features like the uh, spoiler here. If there's a sunroof, I'll get a sunroof. If it's got cool wheels, I'll get the cool wheels, the fog lights. A lot of times I'll do that shot together so it's somewhat like this. And then I usually finish off with a shot of the back seat interior. Um, you can see it's really difficult to get a shot in there because of the light. So I gotta adjust my camera that way. Um, the iPad can't really handle it very well. And I do this so that when I see the next little card, you know, I'll do those shots. I'll only record those shots for like two seconds. And I'll do those shots very quickly so that when I'm done, I don't have to do any editing. I can just drop those shots in and I'm, I'm done. All right, so we're going to get ready to shoot. Carlos is on his way down. I just saw him coming down those stairs. He's, well, I saw him coming over this way. So he's on his way down, so we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to do the rest of this video from the camera rather than from the iPad. Okay, we're going to start off. This is the first line that we'll do. Now, I'm just going to show you real quick some of the things that I need to do first. First thing I need to do is make sure my iris is good, so I'm going to press the auto iris button. I don't flip the switch, I just press the button. And then I do my white balance. Okay, see that? Okay, and I zoom out. Everything looks really nice, see that? Okay, once Carlos gets out here, we'll start about this area and we'll move this way. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of the framing that I use for the purpose of the effect. And I will show you kind of how I get him started as well. Okay. You tell me. Now the first thing that I do is I zoom in on his face and I focus on his eyes. And I zoom out, I get my framing. Now notice the space that I have on the top and the bottom and this is for the effect of the uh, stabilization that I do later. Okay, we're gonna start with a kind of a tighter shot like this and I'll just give Carlos a countdown and, and we'll start going. You ready, Carlos? Ready. Okay, here we go in three, two, one, Amigos, buenos días. Les saluda Carlos Ruelas, gerente de ventas de Fletcher Jones, soy de la Casa de Latino. Okay, so now that I am done, I'm going to take these and turn them off. And you turn them off by holding them, holding the on button, and it'll turn off. And I'm going to disconnect them and take these off too. I don't these things. Okay, so I'm done with the mics. I don't need them anymore. And if I don't need the mics anymore, let's turn this one off too. If I don't need those anymore, I also don't need the little mic packs or the, uh, the receivers. So I can take those off. Okay, so let's take the two packs. And we shall put them away over here. Okay, I wrap these up around my hand, kind of. 
and then I take this little clip and I clip it over the wires and try to pull it all together. I usually use two hands to do this, so this is kind of difficult. Hold on. Okay, so in the end it looks like this. I've got the two, I get the wires clipped around like that, and I just drop them in there when I'm done. Okay, I don't need the microphone antenna, so I took them off. I don't need this microphone pack either, so I'm actually going to take it off. Okay, and then I will take the, uh, the battery off like this back on over here and because I'm not going to be doing audio I don't need the headphones I'll put them away later so basically I just have a camera like that now now I do this because this mic pack having it on actually does weigh a lot but not only that it does kind of take the battery down because if you noticed when it was on me see those lights ready charge status all those things those were on. Well, at least the ready and the status were on. Um, and they drain the battery a little bit. And this thing, even though it's off, sometimes drains the battery just a little bit too. This mic pack drains the battery too, but I can't figure out how to get it to stop turning on. Okay, so my camera is like this now. All the audio input will now come from inside, from the front mic rather than from any other mics. And if you look, I now have three hours of battery left and I had three hours and 45 minutes when I first started once I start recording that number will go down um, it should go down greatly actually so I am going to go ahead and start recording and let you know what I do as I do it okay so now it's time for my favorite part which is the b-roll and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over here on this thing now you'll notice this camera requires me to get a little bit far away because I can't really focus on this when I'm close up. What I'll do is I'll get a shot of it like this and then I'll scroll down like that and I'll do it very quickly and then I'll get the other shots and I'll show you kind of how quick they are and, and what I do with them. Ready? Okay, now you saw on the Corolla how quick that was shots were very short and that's so that I don't have to do a lot of editing when I'm done. Okay, so now I'm going to do this one. This is a Corolla S. So this will have a little bit more detail when I'm done. <laughs> now as you can see with that Corolla, with the blue one, there were more interesting shots. So I was able to do a little bit more with it and put some more stuff in it, but the shots were still very short. Now, I don't put the shot of the of this little card in it. I only use that for my reference. So you can see shots are very short, very precise. Um, I don't start shooting until I have my shot. And I just roll it for one to two seconds, and that's about it. So you can see it's pretty much the same basic pattern. Shoot the card, shoot the back, shoot the front window, shoot the exterior accessories, and then shoot the back window. never noticed that side airbag label before. That's interesting. For me, a Corolla and a Camry, most of the LE models, are very appliance cars. They're not very interesting and fun, so I try to make these as interesting as possible. But it's really difficult to do. Now I'm trying to shoot these in the order in which we shot the segments. So I usually save this for last so that I can remember. Um, it's a lot easier for me that way. That color is interesting. 
So as I shoot these, I'll just keep going down the line, um, and then when, they, when we edit them, it's a lot easier because you just have the certain shots that we're going to use. It's pretty easy to do. Keep in mind also, I'm changing the filters for most of these shots. Um, a lot of them I'm doing in four. Every now and then if it's shady, I'll do a three. A lot of the interiors are done in threes. Um, some are even done in two and one, and some may even put up the game. All right, now we're moving on to this next line. This particular line, we started at the far end and came back this way. Um, this is where we will see, oh, well, this car was not here, by the way. This is where we will see things such as um, as-is cars, things that don't have a warranty. We don't mention that, but um, but I'll show you how to spot them so that you don't accidentally put certified for 100,000 miles and this car has got like 156,000 miles or whatever. Okay, so let's look at these. Okay, for example, this Nissan Rogue here, if you look at the, um, let me use a macro zoom. If you look at the stock number, you'll see 5670C1. That particular one is certified, but it's not a Toyota certified. Um, so they have different rules and regulations when it comes to the um, certification on these. So I don't ever mention that it has certification or that it's a certified vehicle when I see that kind of a stock number get this right here. So when I see something like that, 5670C1, um, I basically leave that out and talk about something else that this car might have. Um, in the case of this car, it's got a 2.5 liter four cylinder with a CVT. That means it's getting pretty decent gas mileage. Okay, and it's an S by the way, on Nissans, S does not mean sport. One of the only ones that, that's like that. Um, Toyota's S means sport. Um, most of the other it means sport, but S is actually a base model. This particular model is very popular among girls. Personally, I'm not sure why, but uh, I know a lot of girls that like them. Okay, now when I was telling you that this is a base model, if you look at the wheels you can pretty much tell see the wheels back here in the very back these are hubcaps hubcaps don't come on higher trim models they come on base models uh, this little standard aluminum wheel if you were to rip that hubcap off you'd still have a rim back there but uh, it wouldn't be very nice all right so what do i do with the car that skip it let's go to the next one is this one now see these windows have really dark tinted there okay, I'm trying to iris them up but it's not working so it's always really hard to get these okay there it is that's what I need Okay, I shot this car last week, so I'm just going to ignore it this time. I also got this one last week too, so I'm going to skip it. Okay, in the case of this, I'm going to have to take the shot of the other stock number thing. I'm going to skip a couple of these because I've already shot them. Um, the Sienna, some of these Highlanders here, that Red Rav 4, I don't think I've shot before. But those other two I have. So there's no sense in doing a bunch of them. Now I skipped a couple over there, the BMW and the Veloster. Um, but those are such identifiable cars in this lineup that it's a lot easier to skip them and find them again. This particular one, this Highlander here, for example, I think there were two gold ones last week. So let's make sure I've got the stock number correct here. And I can skip that. This red RAV4, I don't think I can skip. 
I don't think it was there last week. Alright, let's get the stock numbers of these two. I think I've got these already. Definitely got that red one last week. Okay, now let's get this black one. Does not look familiar to me, so may have it, but I'm not sure, so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it. There's Venza as well. Venzas don't move very quickly. They can't move them as quickly as other vehicles. So chances are this Venza was already done last week as well. Okay, so now that we're done with all those, we're gonna go over to this value zone. And we may actually see a T number over there. That would be interesting. Although, they're all Toyotas, so I doubt it. Okay, let me explain about the T number. I don't know exactly what it means, but as you can see here, you get a CP number, and you've seen the other ones where it's a C1 at the end. Okay, now, if you look here, you'll see this chart right next to it that says, as is, warranty, or no warranty, as is, no warranty, or it'll have a warranty. Sometimes it'll even say limited warranty, or full warranty, whatever. Um, when it's got the CP or the C1, this will be, it'll say warranty. If it's got the T, it'll say as is, no warranty. Um, they can't guarantee certain cars after a certain amount of mileage or a certain amount of years. And so they'll sell them that way. So when you see a T stock number, you don't put it in. You know what? Everything in the value zone is here before, so let's just get the numbers. If you see a T stock number, you never put certified for 100,000 miles because they're not. Um, but you can put things like 1.9% financing and uh, sport model or whatever. I know I shot this one last week. This is my favorite car in the lot. This one I'm pretty sure I shot last week too. So it's important to note those on the stock numbers. Okay, I'm going to show you a little something interesting with this hybrid here, with the logo. All right, I'm going to just leave it rolling. Now, as I get up real close to it like this, and it's still in focus because of the iris. If I were to open up the iris so I could see it real good, see how it loses focus? When I zoom in, it loses more. No matter what I do with the focus ring, I cannot focus it focuses on things in the back. It won't focus on that because it's only about three inches away from the lens of the camera. So now I'm going to use the macro zoom. I'm going to turn that. and You see how it does that? It changes the focal plane. Now if I were to use the macro zoom, actually if I were to zoom in a little bit with the regular zoom, not macro zoom, macro focus. If I, and if I were to use the macro focus, I'd actually have to turn it a little more. Now, let me focus on it right there. Watch what happens when I go in and out of zoom. It changes the focal plane of the whole entire thing. I love playing with that. It's just a fun thing to play with. So I can zoom in real good. Look at that. That just looks really cool, doesn't it? If I can fit this whole thing in here like this, I can just play with that whole plane. Look at that. Doesn't that look neat? Okay, so now I'm taking this off here. Right, well, let me shut the camera off. And let's take this battery off and put it away. Just put it up there for now this thing back in here. Oh, you know, let me put this lens cap on first. See the lens cap there. Get, that on. Get on there. All right. Okay. That's pretty much it. And we're done with that. So this is a wrap up. We're all pretty much done with the entire show. Um, or shooting the entire show. And I can get some more details on edit if you'd like. But I think I'm pretty much done.
All right, so that's a wrap. There's a the lot of cars behind me. Okay, so we're pretty much done. I've put the camera away. And now we're just going to go back and dump the footage onto the computer and go ahead and put it all together and edit it. Now, I won't edit it until Thursday, um, so I'll probably have this up before then. But I just wanted to give you guys a good overview of how I shoot. That way, if anyone needs to fill in for me while I'm while anything happens or for whatever reason, um, you can kind of see the format that I use, the methods that I use, and um, the patterns that I use so that you can pretty much follow the same thing. Um, it's a lot of work, but in the end, uh, once you start editing, it's, it's a lot easier, faster. Um, it'll be nice and quick to edit when you get to the editing point because you don't have to do ins and outs and all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, makes it nice and quick. I uh, try to keep everything nice and organized so that you can just do it in the order that, uh, that I shot it. And that's it. All right, so let's go over the charging of this thing. You can see it has two hours left. Um, basically, I just leave it connected to the pack like this. I come over here and I take one of these cords, which I already have plugged in. And I just plug it in right here. And it starts to charge. And I have two of these packs, so if I were to charge two of them together, they'd both get charged. And that's it. I just leave that there until it's done. All right.